let's see if there's any chance that this child could feel comfortable in their, um, with their biological sex. Let's see if we can teach this girl um, that there are a lot of ways to be a girl. Some girls like Barbies and some do not. Some girls like dresses and some do not. Both are equally Absolutely. acceptable. Children need to be talking about their gender and their gender identity. Not one way to be a boy, not one way to be a girl. You can tell me who you are and I will not pass judgment. Don't you love fires? My fault I feel. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry. I think it's, I mean, they're very late on this and the Conservative government have been in government through all of the woke uh, hell that's being raged through the schools. Um, I think another sort of part to this is how indoctrinated uh, students are being when they're doing sort of teacher training courses. So we have to sort of get it out of universities. That would be sort of slicing it at the root. But I recently went into a school with a parent who was concerned about what she was being taught and the school was called a no outsider school. And let me just warn parents watching, if your child is at a school that's a no outsider school, you really do need to go and have a very, very uh, honest conversation with teachers about what it is that they're doing. Now, what I found when I went into the school, not just that they were doing this, not just that there were no, uh, so this is a primary school, there would be no um, firm view on excluding boys from girls sleeping accommodation on residential trips. So that would mean that a boy that says he's a girl would be in with the girls. Uh, girls and boys would be told off for misgendering. Um, that would be a punishable offence in schools. Um, you know, the list is endless. But what was really frightening is how dishonest those teachers were. You know, friendly little Mrs Smith um, in charge of safeguarding at this particular school and actually just complete dishonest, really thought they knew better than parents and treated parents with absolute contempt for even asking what was going on in the school. Absolutely. Mr. Speaker, it's the first time I've commented on, on this issue. Recently, this concept called the gender-bred person um, was found on a school intranet in Ipswich, and it promoted the idea that biology doesn't matter, it's all about what's in your head. It was complete self-identification. It also promoted outdated gender stereotypes. It had a list of hobbies and jobs associated with men and women. So presumably, if you like football, you know, somebody might talk to you and say, well, actually, have you thought about actually being, being a boy? Which is completely um, regressive. Does the minister agree with me that there is no place for a gender-bred person in schools at all? And does she also agree with me that in primary schools, we should be incredibly careful about promoting anything to do with gender ideology? Yeah. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, my honourable friend raises a very good point, and it is one of the things that I am seeking to resolve. Because we have not provided clarity in the law, uh, a lot of the space has been filled by many dubious, uh, dubious organisations producing very, very dubious materials uh, with no basis in biology, in the law whatsoever, but they're pushing it because they think that they get away with it. I think we as a government have a responsibility to clear out this material from schools. I think the Secretary of uh, uh, State for education is looking at the materials that are being taught under RSHE. But it is very important, I think the point he makes is very clear, that primary school children in particular need to be protected. That is why the guidance we are going to be putting out on gender, quest uh, on gender questioning children is going to address this issue, except in the most extreme safeguarding cases, and I expect that to include clinical advice. You should not be socially transitioning any primary school children at all or introducing them to, to this theory. Gender is not something that is inherent to persons. There is no evidence to that effect. Gender is, in fact, the relationship between the person's free will and the series of stereotypes that assign behaviors or patterns or roles 
to a particular given sex or to the understanding of sex in a given society. We remain absolute that the Welsh Government stands together with and within our LGBTQ plus communities in Wales. We want to create a Wales where everyone feels free, supported and safe to be and live their lives as their authentic selves. It's really important to me that we ensure that children and young people in Wales grow up to be healthy, confident and compassionate individuals. And today we see the launch of Cardiff University's primary agenda. These are free teaching resources for those that are working in our primary schools with children aged 7 to 11 to help deliver really important, exciting and engaging relationships education. I hope that our teachers will really engage with these resources and I want to say a huge thank you to everybody that has been involved. By working together on these important lessons, we can realise the dream of children growing up to be healthy, confident, compassionate individuals. So please follow along and a huge thank you to everyone that's been involved. To love fires, my fault I feel. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear, but where are the clouds? Quick, send in the clouds. Don't. Father, they're here. Dr. Michael Slater, Associate Professor at University of North New South Wales, that co authored the report um, with Edinburgh University, stated the rise in online child offences was part of a global trend over the last two decades, adding that an unregulated online environment was a direct cause of sexual offending against children. Men who are sexually offending children, he said, are watching a lot more online pornography, but also the type of content they are consuming is very deviant. It is more likely to be violent. It is more likely to be forceful. A report commissioned by uh, the MP, Miriam Cates, and the social, new social covenant calling for a government review and entitled What is Being Taught in Relationship and Sex Education in Our Schools highlights how things have changed since the guidance produced by the DOV in the year 2000, which stated, what is sex and relationship education? It is a lifelong learning about physical, moral and emotional developments. It is about understanding the importance of marriage for family life, stable and loving relationships, respect, love and care. It is also about the teaching of sex, sexuality and sexual health. It is not about the promotion of sexual orientation or sexual activity. This would be inappropriate teaching. I think we'd all feel very happy with that definition of RSE. But this statement does not feature in the latest 2019 guidance, which contains advice that is not compatible with the definition. Indeed, now there is strong evidence that actors with a radical ideological position on sex, gender and sexuality are monopolising the RSE third sector, as, as Noble Lord Jackson has said. And I shall give a couple of advantages, uh, examples. He mentioned uh, Jessica Ringrose from UCL, Amelia Jenkinson, former CEO of the School of Sexuality Education, and he mentioned Play-Doh vulvas and felt tip dick pics. If my, Lord, your Lordships will indulge me, Children aged 12 to 16 were encouraged to draw sexually explicit images, including hands masturbating erections, with the words, want to see me come, spelt C-U-M, and now it's your turn, ride me. The academics went on to recall there was a sense of solidarity amongst, this is our ironic, solidarity amongst the girls as they discussed the pictures they had received from random old men on Snapchat. 
really. Is that really acceptable? Certainly not, for the, for, particularly for the 12 and 13 year olds in the class who are needlessly exposed to this sort of thing, having mercifully never, never, mercifully never experienced it in real life. But another, it gets worse. Another provider splits banana, gives lessons on to the same age children where it describes four types of sex, penis and vagina, oral sex, masturbation, and anal sex. Whilst their lessons created an equivalence for heterosexual couples between anal and vaginal sex, which has the potential to mislead children about whether anal sex is a universally enacted, desirable, or safe sexual practice. Work has also begun on developing guidance for local authorities and schools to support transgender children and young people so that it can be confident and comfortable in supporting trans students in all aspects of school life. No problems, I will be brief, I promise. But I think what's really important about the objectivity and the pluralistic side of things is about making sure that the matters of fact, that they're verifiable, that they need to be distinguished between what's a matter of belief or a personal opinion. And also then that actually, you know, we can have conversations and we want our young people to be critical thinkers. But ultimately, you know, we need to ensure that the conversations are safe and that it's not just a case of anything goes because all voices aren't equal because, they, you know, we have the Equalities Act for that. Don't you love of fires My fault I feel I thought that you'd want what I want Sorry my dear But where are the clouds Quick send in the clouds Don't bother me putting on the record what social transitioning is because I know a lot of people may not necessarily be clear about what I'm referring to. Social transitioning is a relatively new phenomenon. It is rooted in gender identity theory which I must stress is a very contested ideology. The term is often used to refer to a range of actions that a child may take to appear more like the opposite sex accompanied by an expectation that they will be treated as if they are. This may include requests for a child to change their name, pronouns associated with them, uniform, or use different facilities from those provided for their biological sex. Not all of these requests will comply with legal duties on schools, in particular to safeguard children. Social transitioning is not a neutral act, as it has been recognised that it can have formative effects on a child's future development, which is what he's alluding to when he's talking about cross-sex hormones. We are uh, taking this very seriously. We will have the gender questioning guidance out uh, very shortly, and I hope it will address many of the issues uh, which he is concerned about. The terms transgender um, didn't come into existence until the 1990s, but in uh, Britain today, there are six times, Britons, normal Britons, um, who, uh, who speak to this about their, uh, to their GPs, are six times more likely to say they are transgender than they did 10 years ago. My lords, this has all the hallmarks of a classic example of social contagion, in which the internet, uh, smartphones and social media, the fashion and advertising industries, uh, various pressure groups, TV programs, uh, some doctors who undertake mutilating um, surgery on perfectly healthy bodies have come together to create what is essentially a new ideology, one that's not anchored in the human experience of the past 3,000 years of recorded history. How extreme trans ideology, which presents schools with significant safeguarding concerns, was allowed to be adopted as fact when it too is far from neutral. Teaching children, including in early primary school, about gender fluidity further entrenches the sexualization of childhood, conjoined as it often is with sex positivity. The fact of the legal age of consent seems to be ignored, despite the key safeguarding reasons underlying it. Our zeitgeist is deeply rooted in the notion that the development of sexuality is indispensable to identity, 
This is not some fundamental human truth, but the idea of Sigmund Freud. Quoting Keynes, ideas, both when they are right and when they are wrong, are more, more powerful than is commonly understood. Indeed, the world is ruled by little else. The education system should be a bulwark against pernicious ideas evolving into domineering and bullying ideologies and not simply affirm both them and the young people persuaded by them. I'm not using the word ideology as a slur against a way of thinking that is simply different to my own, but in the Althusserian sense of ideology representing the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. Mm. Extreme trans ideology states, I am what I feel, irrespective of my biology. It is the epitome of expressive individualism and detached from reality. I draw a key distinction between gender dysphoria, where sufferers and psych professionals know there is something wrong, and ideological dispositions held, for example, by bodily intact males who intend to remain so but feel they are female and aggressively demand to be treated as such. Yeah. Schools should not consider themselves bound by the individual's desire to have this imagined reality, reality validated even if parents are on board with it. Parents cannot dictate how schools are run for the sake of their child. A decision to affirm a child's chosen rather than biological identity affects the whole school. Other children can feel or even be genuinely coerced into affirming an individual's imagined reality. It confuses young children and stifles the development of older children's critical capacity. Elsewhere, their education requires them to be led by facts and evidence, but in this particular area, feelings trump all else. We now know that most children with gender confusion, given time and space, will grow out of it. And yet, in contrast, if they are socially transitioned, they're more likely to continue on a path of puberty blockers, hormone replacements and irreversible surgeries. Children who go down this pathway can end up chemically castrated, castrated, unable to have children. Their bone and their, even their brain development will be disrupted. The full side effects and consequences remain unknown. This is an unprecedented medical experiment on our children. How can we justify the government, the school system, the very adults who should be safeguarding our children, be complicit in putting children on this pathway? Shouldn't all social transition just be simply stopped in schools? Extending rights for one group does not mean eroding rights for an from another. We do not believe improving rights for trans women will damage rights for cisgender women and girls. Don't you love fires? My fault I feel I thought that you'd want what I want Sorry, my dear But where are the clouds? Quick, send in the clouds don't bother, they're often fear being physically injured by biological males and enduring uh, rather than speaking up about the abuse because they are scared of being called bigots. And this is what I would say to people uh, across the house, that calling people transphobic and calling them bigots when they express concerns is creating a chilling effect. I had a group of school children, teenage girls, 
who I had in my office who told me about how because of mixed sex sports, they are bullied and pushed around. That they, one of them talked about her glasses being broken because the boys are using the opportunity to bully. We should think about children. We should yes. think about protecting them. Yeah. So I disagree with uh, the, yeah. the labeling of anybody who has a different opinion as transphobic. That is what is causing the problems in this debate. Yeah. And I am determined to bring some light rather than the heat which they continue to generate. Last month, I set out the next steps in our work to ban conversion practices. <laughs> Support services have been expanded across Wales, and a working group of experts has been formed. The group will provide us with the advice and expertise we need to consign these abhorrent practices to history. The first meeting has already taken place. Don't you love fires? My fault, I feel. I thought that you. Principally on the uh, uh, assertion that there is a need for uh, a ban on conversion therapy, including uh, conversion of trans people. And I, I want to look at this through a slightly different lens. Um, I, I'll start off by a quote with a quote from Kierkegaard. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to believe what is true. And I, I think that is, in essence, what I want, the point I want to make, which is that legislation is supposed to fix a problem, not create a new one. And where evidence of conversion practices exist, they may not be mitigated by elements of such proposals. They will be exacerbated by it, because the true scandal that needs to be addressed is the medical and surgical conversion of young lesbian and gay males by affirming and transing away the gay. And this proposal, or such a proposal, rests upon a bed of dangerous lies. And it's but one part of an assault on the sex-based rights of women, lesbians, gay men and bisexual people. And it's perpetrated and under the cover of once important LGB organisations such as Stonewall, who are erasing gay identities. They are complicit in using the T to erase the LGB. Now, there are three legislative conceits that form part of this movement. Gender self-ID, amendments to hate crime and public order legislation, and so-called conversion therapy bans. Each are the antithesis of what they purport to be. Self-ID is not about equality, it is about promoting supremacy. Uh, hate crime legislation is about silencing the raising of valid safeguarding concerns, and preventing conversion therapy is promoting the very thing it aims to stop. This bill is today's modern conversion therapy scandal, and it's affecting vulnerable children and young people who may be gender non-conforming or are struggling with normal yet distressing pubertal body dysmorphia. This bill would embed the lie that these young people have been born in the wrong body, that the normal development of puberty should be arrested with chemicals, something that can never be restarted or repaired. That emotional distress that that emotional distress can be fixed with hormones and irreversible radical surgical intervention. This is being facilitated in Scotland and elsewhere by government non-statutory guidance promoted by activist teachers and enabled by others, bamboozled, threatened and afraid to speak out because of the attacks carried out by radicalised gender activists. Yeah. Social transitioning is being arranged and encouraged in schools with parents and carers being completely excluded from their own child's care. The NSPCC recognised this as a form of grooming, stating groomers may introduce secrets as a way to control or frighten the child. Teachers prepared to keep secrets with children to the exclusion of their parents or child protection teams is not only dangerous to the child but legally precarious for that teacher and they should be open to prosecution. 
None of those teachers are employed as experts in psychological therapy, dysphoria, or complex gender assessment. What they are doing is top to tail dangerous and wrong. In their zeal and in secret from parents, they are effectively denying vulnerable children access to the very therapeutic support they so desperately and obviously need from real experts, not gender ideology radicals. And particularly the CAS report demonstrated the shockingly disproportionate high number of autistic children seen by the Portman and Tavistock Gender Identity Service. 48%, I'm going to repeat it, 48% of referrals to that clinic had autistic characteristics. And yet in the course of their work, nobody questioned why. What is going on here? I'm pleased to see the Department of Health is addressing the CAS report, and I'm grateful too to the Minister at the Dispatch Box dis uh, today for the time she has allowed me in private to outline to her some of the similar problems experienced in some state schools for autistic children. Information given to me directly by the parents of those, of those children. And as I've discussed with my noble friend, particularly as far as girls are concerned. Parents have been locked out from what has been going on in schools that has affected their own children. And these have included things like breast binding, initiated by teachers without the parents' knowledge, referral to doctors who have prescribed puberty blockers, and of course things like changing pupils' names. Now, some of these issues have led to court cases. But we know that pubescent teenage girls sometimes struggle with the changes in their bodies and peer pressure to conform. How much more so for autistic girls who in, on this complex issue um, have found that so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just try and show, put some light on it um, with, a, with a quote from um, Autism and Gender Identity, written by Jane Galloway. She has suggested that with such a huge number of autistic girls identifying as trans, whether they be a boy or as a non-binary, although they will biologically be female, or in rare cases, intersex, we have to ask questions why this affects so many autistic children. Growing up in a culture soaked by internet porn, in which women are expected to conform to highly sexualized performative femininity, young girls are often faced impossible beauty standards. They are seeing a world of toxic gender roles that speak neither for nor to them. And, for, and that also applies, I may add, to um, young lesbians, and, or, uh, as well as autistic girls. The temptation to reject all this outright is overwhelming. Add in the differentiated theory of mind, something, a theory of mind uh, documented by Francesca Happe many years ago, um, which throws light on the way the autistic mind works. It's no wonder that many girls who are autistic, and many of them will assume, because I am not this, I am that. And perhaps that was a question that should have been asked at the Tavistock Clinic. It's certainly a question that I hope in education we will ask as far as autistic girls in classrooms are concerned. And I hope in, in the guidelines that are to come, my noble friend will be able to influence that. Uh, WISC intend to ask for expressions of interests from those in the field for a gender identity development service for Wales. Uh, and that will be informed by the CAS review by the conversations that we will have with uh, Dr Cass, but also by a broader set of evidence that we have here in Wales. Of so Chris Bryant. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I will say this as gently as I can. I feel... I, I feel today, as a gay man, less safe than I did three years or five years ago. Why? Sometimes because of the rhetoric that is used, including by herself, in the public debate. We can't, I'm afraid we're not able to have a debate. Let's have a debate. I'd be very happy to debate. I'm just making that point, that many of us feel less safe today 
And when people over there cheer as they just did, yeah. it chills me to the bone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I will also speak very gently to the uh, honourable yeah. gentleman. Yeah. He says that my rhetoric chills him to the bone. I would be really keen to hear exactly what it is I have said yeah. Yeah. in this statement or previously that is so chilling. Yeah. But I, but, the, but I, would tell, I would tell him what chilled me. In May 2021, against official advice, I will stress that officials said, you should not have this meeting. I met a young lady called Kira Bell. She was a lesbian. She was a lesbian who told me the horrific experience that she had in the Tavistock Clinic. It was an eye-opening experience. I know that the member for Kakodi and Cowden Beath talked about transing away the gay in his speech uh, in Westminster Hall debate. We are seeing, I would say, almost an epidemic of young gay children, young gay children being told that they are trans and being put on a medical pathway for irreversible decisions and they are regretting it. That is what I'm doing for, for, for young LGBT children. I am, making sure, I am making sure that young people do not find themselves sterilized because they, are being, because they are being exploited by people who do not understand what these issues are. And I am saying this on the advice of clinicians. I am saying this on the advice of academics. There are clinicians from the Tavistock who have been whistleblowing, talking about what these, uh, talking about what these issues are. The honourable man tells me that he, that he he is traumatised. We are traumatised by what is happening to young children and we are not going to run away from this issue any longer. Yeah. We recommit ourselves to supporting trans and non-binary people and our starting point is that trans men are men, trans women are women and non-binary identities are valid. Yeah. The Welsh Government stands with all our LGBTQ plus communities and as politicians and public figures we can and must be better. That's why we're committed to doing all we can to improve the lives of trans people in Wales and to seeking any further powers to do this, including our programme for government and cooperation agreement commitment to trigger a request to devolve the Gender Recognition Act and support our trans community. And preliminary work on this has already started. Don't you love fires? My fault I feel I thought that you'd want what I want Sorry, my dear But where are the clouds? Quick, send in the clouds don't bother, they're issues that we have is that a lot of people do not understand the law where it comes to self-identification. We are providing clarity there. We have engaged with numerous LGBT groups, but the fact of the matter is that many of them support self-ID. That is not this government's policy. Stonewall does not decide the law in this country. Yeah.